So today we will see the Riksha, that is the Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, or the Big Bear, uh, which is known as, interestingly, which is known as Riksha uh, in Rig Veda and also in Brahmanas. Shatapratha Brahmana records that the Riksha was rising in the north and Kritikas were rising in the east during that time. So it's very interesting that uh, Shatapata also records that in former times the Saptarishis were called Riksha and Riksha is mentioned in Rig Veda as I said earlier. So when uh, we go to 11,000 BC, we see that uh, the Riksha is coming nearer to the pole point. As we go towards 8,000 BC, we see it is coming more nearer. And during the Tau Hercules, it has come more nearer. The Tau Hercules becomes the pole, pole star. It is the most faintest pole, pole star among all the pole stars and its magnitude is almost very similar to Arundhati, uh, the wife of Vashishta, which is one of the Saptarishis. As we go towards Tuvan, uh, we see that Riksha has come very near and it is rising in the north. So we can say that uh, the Arundhati and Vashishta, Alcor and Nizu, they are very near to the pole point and they're rising almost, uh, in fact, almost behaving like a pole star itself. You can see that. So during Tuvan time, it is very near, and Tuvan itself is a pole star that time. As we go further, uh, we see that Riksha is again very near, and it was near for almost uh, two to 3,000 years, and it was rising in the north. So Shatapata records that Kritikas were rising in the east and Saptarishis were rising in the north. And uh, this is something very fascinating they have recorded. In today's time, uh, that is the Polaris, which is also, this whole constellation is also known as the Small Dipper. That is the, uh, I have identified with the duo of Riksha and his son Araksha from Rig Veda itself. So one can imagine how old uh, this can be because Polaris is now, um, the small dipper is now uh, the pole star in our times and we know that Rig Veda is not written in our times. So it is at least one cycle back when Riksha and Araksha are mentioned that can be the lower limit of the Rig Veda. But we don't know where to place right now Riksha and uh, Araksha uh, as person who are uh, available in Rig Veda. As we go uh, in future, uh, during 4000 CE, you see that the stars of Cephas uh, becomes a pole star. And you see that the Riksha is going away. So it is something like uh, Riksha came very near to the pole point, which is the beehive, and now it is climbing down. So it is gi giving a complete imagery why our sages first uh, imagined this uh, star as a uh, star cluster, that, is, that makes a question mark in the sky, as a Riksha. So it is climbing up and again it is climbing down and you can see very well how uh, this is getting placement in the sky and in the memories of the sages. So uh, the star of sickness uh, becomes the pole star uh, during uh, just before Veda has to become pole star. So it has become in the pre uh, previous uh, uh, cycle also and in the next cycle also it will become a star. And now you see the Veda. And you see the pattern of Riksha 
coming nearer and going further, coming nearer and going further. So this is something very fascinating to understand. So even when uh, we say that uh, riksha, so uh, one can imagine how bear climbs a tree and gets the pole point or the beehive and eats the honey and again comes back and back down, climbs down back. So this was the pattern regularly visualized by our sages and Naranyakas and that is what they implied they employed it on uh, on the sky also and at least this must have taken a cycle with the help of singular word picture further when it uh, when it uh, became Saptarishi again the same concept came of the bridle so even uh, while having the bridle of the horse or something like that. You pull and then you release the bridle, you release the Raju, Rasi, uh, Rashmi, Rashmi. Mm. So that was the concept again uh, with the Rishi also. So isn't it amazing to understand why the name Viksha came into being? Uh, and it is found in Brazil. 